the Battle of Austerlitz, also known as the Battle of the Three Emperors, was one of the most important and decisive engagements of the Napoleonic Wars, in what is widely regarded as the greatest victory achieved by Napoleon. The Grand Aar Army QT of France defeated a larger Russian and Austrian army led by Tsar Alexander I and Holy Roman Emperor Francis II. The battle occurred near the village of Austerlitz in the Austrian Empire, because of the near-perfect execution of a calibrated but dangerous plan. The battle is often seen as a tactical masterpiece of the same stature as Cannae, the celebrated triumph by Hannibal some 2,000 years before. Austerlitz brought the War of the Third Coalition to a rapid end, with the Treaty of Pressburg signed by the exhausted Austrians later in the month. After eliminating an Austrian army during the Ulm campaign, French forces managed to capture Vienna in November 1805. The Austrians avoided further conflict until the arrival of the Russians bolstered Allied numbers. Napoleon sent his army north in pursuit of the Allies, but then ordered his forces to retreat so he could feign a grave weakness. Desperate to lure the Allies into battle, Napoleon gave every indication in the days preceding the engagement that the French army was in a pitiful state, even abandoning the dominant Pratzen Heights near Austerlitz. He deployed the French army below the Pratzen Heights and deliberately weakened his right flank, enticing the Allies to launch a major assault there in the hopes of rolling up the whole French line. A forced march from Vienna by Marshal Davout and his Third Corps plugged the gap left by Napoleon just in time. Meanwhile, the heavy Allied deployment against the French right weakened their centre on the Pratzen Heights which was viciously attacked by the 4th Corps of Marshal Salt. With the Allied center demolished, the French swept through both enemy flanks and sent the Allies fleeing chaotically, capturing thousands of prisoners in the process. The Allied disaster significantly shook the faith of Emperor Francis in the British-led war effort. France and Austria agreed to an armistice immediately and the Treaty of Pressburg followed shortly after, on 26 December. Pressburg took Austria out of both the war and the coalition while reinforcing the earlier treaties of Campo Formio and of Luneville between the two powers. The treaty confirmed the Austrian loss of lands in Italy and Bavaria to France and in Germany to Napoleon's German allies. It also imposed an indemnity of 40 million francs on the defeated Habsburgs and allowed the fleeing Russian troops free passage through hostile territories and back to their home soil. Critically, victory at Austerlitz permitted the creation of the Confederation of the Rhine, a collection of German states intended as a buffer zone between France and Central Europe. The Confederation rendered the Holy Roman Empire virtually useless, so the latter collapsed in 1806 after Francis abdicated the imperial throne, keeping Francis I of Austria as his only official title. These achievements, however, did not establish a lasting peace on the continent. Prussian worries about growing French influence in Central Europe sparked the War of the Fourth Coalition in 1806. Prologue. Europe had been in turmoil since the start of the French Revolutionary Wars in 1792. In 1797, after five years of war, the French Republic subdued the First Coalition. A second coalition was formed in 1798, but by 1801, this too had been defeated, leaving Britain the only opponent of the new French consulate. In March 1802, France and Britain agreed to end hostilities under the Treaty of Amiens. For the first time in ten years, all of Europe was at peace. But many problems persisted between the two sides, making implementation of the treaty increasingly difficult. The British government resented having to turn over most of the colonial conquests it had made since 1793. Napoleon was angry that British troops had not evacuated the island of Malta. The tense situation only worsened when Napoleon sent an expeditionary force to crush the Haitian Revolution. In May 1803, Britain declared war on France. 
Third Coalition. In December 1804, an Anglo-Swedish agreement led to the creation of the Third Coalition. British Prime Minister William Pitt spent 1804 and 1805 in a flurry of diplomatic activity geared towards forming a new coalition against France, and by April 1805 Britain and Russia had signed an alliance. Having been defeated twice in recent memory by France, and being keen on revenge, Austria joined the coalition a few months later. French Imperial Army Before the formation of the Third Coalition, Napoleon had assembled an invasion force, called the ARME Acute Dangle Terror around six camps at Boulogne in northern France. He intended to use this invasion force to strike at England, and was so confident of success that he had commemorative medals struck to celebrate the conquest of the English. Although they never invaded, Napoleon's troops received careful and invaluable training for any possible military operation. Boredom among the troops occasionally set in, but Napoleon paid many visits and conducted lavish parades in order to boost morale. The men at Boulogne formed the call for what Napoleon would later call La Grande Arme Acute. At the start, this French army had about 200,000 men organized into seven corps, which were large field units that contained 36 to 40 cannon each and were capable of independent action until other corps could come to the rescue. A single corps could survive at least a day without support, giving the Grand AARM EQT countless strategic and tactical options on every campaign. On top of these forces, Napoleon created a cavalry reserve of 22,000 organized into two cuirassier divisions, four mounted dragoon divisions one division of dismounted dragoons and one of light cavalry, all supported by 24 artillery pieces. By 1805, the Grand AARM EQT had grown to a force of 350,000 men, who were well equipped, well trained and led by competent officers. Russian Imperial Army the Russian army in 1805 had many characteristics of ancient regime organization. There was no permanent formation above the regimental level. The Russian infantry was considered one of the most efficient in Europe, however, and there was fine Russian artillery manned by soldiers who regularly fought hard to prevent their pieces from falling into enemy hands. Austrian Imperial Army Archduke Charles, brother of the Austrian Emperor, had started to reform the Austrian army in 1801 by taking away power from the half Kriegsrat, the military political council responsible for the armed forces. Charles was Austria's best field commander, but he was unpopular at court and lost much influence when, against his advice, Austria decided to go to war with France. Karl Mack became the new main commander in Austria's army, instituting reforms on the eve of the war that called for a regiment to be composed of four battalions of four companies, rather than three battalions of six companies. Austrian cavalry was considered the best in Europe, and one of the best of the time anywhere. Preliminary Moves in August 1805 Napoleon, Emperor of the French since December of the previous year, turned his sights from the English Channel to the Rhine in order to deal with the new Austrian and Russian threats. On 25 September after a feverish march in great secrecy 200,000 French troops began to cross the Rhine on a front of 260 kilometres. Mack had gathered the greater part of the Austrian army at the fortress of Ulm in Swabia. Napoleon swung his forces southward in a wheeling movement that put the French at the Austrian rear. The Ulm maneuver was well executed and on 20 October Mack and 23,000 Austrian troops surrendered at Ulm, bringing the number of Austrian prisoners of the campaign to 60,000. Although this spectacular victory was soured by the defeat of the Franco-Spanish fleet at the Battle of Trafalgar the following day, French success on land continued as Vienna fell in November. The French gained 100,000 muskets, 500 cannon, and intact bridges across the Danube. Meanwhile, Russian delays prevented them from saving the Austrian armies. The Russians then withdrew to the northeast to await reinforcements and link up with surviving Austrian units. 
Tsar Alexander I appointed General Mikhail Ilarionovich Kutuzov commander-in-chief of the combined Russo-Austrian force. Under pressure from Kutuzov, the Austrians agreed to supply munitions and weapons in a timely manner. Kutuzov also spotted shortcomings in the Austrian defense plan, which he called very dogmatic. He objected to Austrian annexation of the land recently under Napoleon's control, because this would make the local people distrust the Allied force. The French followed after Kutuzov, but soon found themselves in a difficult position. Prussian intentions were unknown and could be hostile, the Russian and Austrian armies had converged, and French lines of communication were extremely long, requiring strong garrisons to keep them open. Napoleon realized that to capitalize on the success at Ulm, he had to force the Allies to battle and defeat them. On the Russian side, Kutuzov also realized Napoleon needed to do battle, so instead of clinging to the suicidal Austrian defense plan, Kutuzov decided to retreat. He ordered Pyotr Bagration to contain the French at Vienna with 600 soldiers and instructed Bagration to accept Murat's ceasefire proposal so that the Allied army could have more time to retreat. It was later discovered that the proposal was false and had been used in order to launch a surprise attack on Vienna. Nonetheless, Bagration was able to hold off the French assault for a time by negotiating an armistice with Murat thereby providing Kutuz of time to position himself with the Russian rearguard near Holobrun. Murat initially refrained from an attack believing the entire Russian army stood before him. Napoleon soon realized Murat's mistakes and ordered him to pursue quickly, but the Allied army had already retreated to Olmutz. According to Kutuzov's plan, the Allies would retreat further to the Carpathian region and of Galicia. I will bury the French. Napoleon did not stay still. The French emperor decided to set a psychological trap in order to lure the Allies out. Days before any fighting, Napoleon had been giving the impression that his army was weak and that he desired a negotiated peace. About 53,000 French troops, including Salt, Lannis and Murat's forces, were assigned to take Austerlitz and the Olmutz Road, occupying the enemy's attention. The Allied forces, numbering about 89,000, seemed far superior and would be tempted to attack the outnumbered French army. However, the Allies did not know that Bernadotte, Mortier and Davout were already within the supported distance and could be called in by forced marches from Oglore and Vienna respectively, raising the French number to 75,000 troops. Napoleon's lure did not stop at that. On 25 November, General Savary was sent to the Allied headquarters at Olmutz to deliver Napoleon's message expressing his desire to avoid a battle. While secretly examining the Allied forces' situation, as expected, the overture was seen as a sign of weakness. When Francis I offered an armistice on the 27th, Napoleon accepted enthusiastically. On the same day, Napoleon ordered Salt to abandon both Austerlitz and the Pratzenheitz and, while doing so, to create an impression of chaos during the retreat that would induce the enemy to occupy the heights. The next day, the French emperor requested a personal interview with Alexander I and received a visit from the Tsar's most impetuous aide. Count Dolgoroki. The meeting was another part of the trap, as Napoleon intentionally expressed anxiety and hesitation to his opponents. Dolgoroki reported to the Tsar an additional indication of French weakness. The plan was successful. Many of the Allied officers, including the Tsar's aides and the Austrian chief of staff Franz von Weyrother, strongly supported an immediate attack and appeared to sway Tsar Alexander. Kutuzov's plan to retreat further to the Carpathian region was rejected, and the Allied forces soon fell into Napoleon's trap.